Yo, 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 yo. Fish bud. <coughs> Let's get my guy in here, man. Go ahead and hit that request, my boy. There it is. There he is, there he is. <laughs> there he go, leaving, bro. Get him in here. Y'all go share this out with good people. Mike, give me with that request when you get a second, bro. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Mike, give me with that request when you get a second. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there you go. Why you got so much? Stay in there, man. Get some light, bro. Where you at? The spot. There it goes. I'm in a bad area. He's going to get Mike live on here. My boy, Sales Guru. He's going to come in and get y'all heat. I'm going to have a nice start before we even get into it. What do you say? Oh, there you go. There you go. I'm going to get Mike in here, man. Y'all boys stay tapped, man. We're going through a lot tonight. We got an hour. It's going to be real good. There he is. Yo. There he is. My guy. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Hey, bro. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. How y'all feeling? Man, good, bro. Good, bro. How the, how the day been, man? Bro, good, bro. I, I went to the gym at 4 a.m. for this, like, boot camp with my trainer. Had me sweating. But the day was <laughs> over at, like, 6.30. The whole day was still... Was still good, man, but it's been tight though. It's been good. That boy yeah. on you on the OT on you schedule. <laughs> yeah, get getting up early, getting up early. Um Got to, for man. sure. For sure, man. Uh so yeah, man, we can go ahead and get into it because I'm sure they're gonna want to hear a lot of games. So we'll we'll start though, Mike. Uh for those who don't know you, bro, just give them a quick overview of who you are. Um, you know, quick rundown of your story, man, and then we'll just we'll hop right into it, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, first off, I appreciate y'all for having me on this. We gotta have more talks about money, wealth, freedom. So, first off, I appreciate y'all for putting me on your platform for sure, man. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, yeah, my story's not too crazy, guys. Uh, my dad passed when I was when I was thirteen. I went to jail for a second degree burglary charge when I was eighteen for hanging around the wrong people. Literally mm -hmm. went into the corporate life after that. Work at the front desk in, in Vegas for about seven years. I applied for a promotion every single year, got denied over and over and over again. And literally after all that denial, I was like, damn, I got to find a way to make some money online. Mm -hmm. So like most folks, I went on Google, I typed in how to make money online on YouTube. And I found all these ideas that popped up. Uh, I started a business in resale. That business failed. I went to 30K of credit card debt off that. So taking L after L after L after L, uh, I found a mentor in my man, Nehemiah Davis. He taught me about high income skills and sales. I was able to pay off my debt in about four months from closing over the phone. And then in about two years, I made around 400 grand from just closing over the phone and learning a high income skill set. And I taught about six of my buddies the same skill set as well. But yeah, man, took a lot of L's, but never gave up. Love it, bro. Yeah, man, that, that's exciting, bro. So um real quick before we start talking about like how people can make how people can make money man tell me tell me a little bit about like why is, is sales such an important skill to have bro and like how did you monetize like you know for the person who's listening like yo i'm in the same position as you right now as you were mike like you know hey man like how do what, what can i sell bro like okay i kind of got some sales skills like kind of give them a little game about what you think they could sell or what, what was the first thing that you sold that kind of got you out of that you said twenty thousand. You were in that rut, but you know what was something that you sold or get it, get it people something that they could start doing practically um, and implementing even when they get off the phone here. Hey, you know, you know what, Trey? If I think it comes down to just having like a skill set, right? Okay. Um, are are y'all into like superhero movies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Y'all seen like Marvel? You seen the joint? Um, uh, Black Adam that just came yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about it. 
Oh yeah, that joint, it was crazy. But if y'all look at like any superhero movie, they all start off like super average, right? Like Peter Parker, average, basic, wasn't getting no girls. He starts getting superpowers and bam, you know, he's that guy. Mm -hmm. I see like having a high income skill set as like your superpower basically. Now, maybe it's sales, maybe it's videography, maybe it's speaking, it could be anything really. But for people who are trying to make more money, your superpower is whatever comes easy to you, but it's hard for other people, mm. right? Mm. So maybe it's sales, maybe it's not. But to answer your question, Trey, if it is sales, if you're naturally an extroverted person and you like listening and solving problems, you can literally make five, 10, 20K in a month very easily. But I think the biggest thing is like finding out like what your superpower is. Like for y'all in the chat, someone drops superpower in the chat real quickly. Cause that's all you have to find out is like, what's that thing that comes easy to you, but it's hard for other people. And once you find that niche, that's when you can start figuring out like, okay, this is my, this is my lane. This is what I gotta do. But find your superpower. And that could be the thing that helps you increase your income by not doing anything crazy like I did, getting the debt. Yeah. No, I totally understand. Z, you got anything? Right uh, bro, um, you're extra. I got somebody for, for the introverts. So people, somebody who, like you said, was in, in, in videography. Somebody who's in videography. What you say could make them a high income earner? Like, as opposed to it being just communicating. If you if you had to give them something like generating high tickets, creating some on a platform, getting another skill as far as like messaging, video copywriting, like what, what would you think? What would you suggest for somebody to somebody who's an introvert? All right, all right, all right. So I'll, I'll put y'all on right. So videography, y'all already know every business owner needs someone shooting content mm -hmm. easily. Uh, I did a content day with a guy like two weeks ago. I paid this man four grand for a content day mm. where he's sitting for about two days straight and he just like filmed and edited the videos. So if y'all think about it, if he finds 10 people like me to pay him four grand, that is $40,000 he can make off just taking simple videos and editing them. And he's like 22, 23, the guy I hired, but he's like solid in his skill set. So I think uh, to answer your question, bro, I mean, Whatever that thing is, you can charge like a high price for. What I was going to say is, it goes back to your point and exercise and find something that's easy for you and just try to get it, essentially. Because I, I kind of like that idea, bro. Um, so I think we can get into the question, bro. Yeah, and, 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 and I wanted to say one other thing on what he just said to y'all. Like, pay attention, right? Like, a lot of people um, talk about not wanting to uh get her gift away right and what i focus on too is like what, what mike's really saying is okay let's say right let's break it down for the people who are like well mike that's cool but what what if i don't know you like what if i'm the photographer and i I can't get in contact with mike well that's where the thing is like y'all gotta put them in the groundwork to start dming people messaging people going and find people going up and talking to people hey man i do i do photography you might not be able to make that four grand immediately right but let's say you go and get with a mic he already got his guy, but he needs another content day. You sit down with him, he starts getting good content. Well, then you just say, hey, Mike, look, man, I'm not asking for anything in return. If you could, just give me a little shout out, man, or, or tag me in a post. If not, no worries. You got to be willing to put that out there. And then he's going to, in, in fact, going to say, okay, cool. Yeah, man, I got you, man. And that may put you on that next opportunity to where, where now you can say, yo, I did Mike's content. Now, now you start building a portfolio, right? So it's, it's systems to everything because I know the first objection that's going to come up is, well, what, what if I hadn't started? I can't, I can't charge somebody that. Well, first of all, right, and, and my, you could talk to them too about that mindset piece because I know Neil yeah. be preaching that. But <laughs> if you are on the other side of the fence and you haven't gotten to your mind about understanding the value of yourself and the value of your service, you got to remember that you can start with something free, but you have to have the right intention with it. Don't just go doing things for free. I'm not saying be manipulative at all, but go into it with not asking for anything back, but something simple like, hey, man, shoot me a video testimony, or do you mind if I use these videos? in something else i won't charge you for it and then you start building your platform up that way to start gaining um some traction but if, if you got anything might look like you finna say something bro so go ahead give them something no nah, man nah trey you right though bro and um it, it's funny because at first my videographer was charged like a thousand dollars right like two years ago the same guy and that was four grand because i gave him the same sauce i'm gonna give y'all right now so 
it's kind of what's on the, on the bad stuff me actually. But um, if y'all think about it, right, for a videographer, if they make good content and the business owner has a thriving business, like for example, the content my guy made for me like a year ago, that content got me about five clients that paid me 5K. Mm -hmm. So I made $25,000 off the content he got for me. So if you think about it, I paid him four grand and I made $25,000 from the investment. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are struggling with the mindset, first off, go to business owners, whatever the skill set be. And I'm sure Trey, y'all can, y'all, y'all can vouch for this. Business owners have money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of the problems is when like people try to start businesses and they're looking for clients who are broke. Mm -hmm. But like I said, y'all were in a circle. Y'all was in the room with me at that mansion. All the clients there had money. Yeah, for right. sure. <laughs> right. So I want to add something about that mindset. And like, let's say, um, for instance, you had your video videographer yeah. in, in the first beginning, in, in, in the beginning stage, mm -hmm. and like the processes that he's going. So basically, the, the only way that he's going to be able to charge a higher ticket is him acquiring some form of new skills and getting better at his work. So that that goes back. I know it's the conversation that we're going to have later on, but it's, it's like, what are you doing with this money that you have to invest extra money? Are you kind of putting it in? That's not to say like the traditional ways of investing aren't going to make you money. It will make you money, but it's about acquiring skills to where you can charge this high ticket offer to people. So like, like I said, you might have a video guy who, when you first met him, maybe he just might be good at video. Now he takes some form of course on how to, how to, how to market or how to bring his, 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 his video platform. And now it's, now I got an LLC and everything to ticket a little bit higher because I got a higher demand for pe other people that want me to do, do this service. So it's just all the things like that, bro, that you can kind of just speak into detail about acquiring extra skills that get, make, make, make a person of higher value and stuff that you can add on to it or get into the question. Yeah, no, no, no. That's a good point. I want to answer somebody's question. Uh, digital content space said, uh, how can we know exactly who our ideal client is? Um, if you could elaborate on that for me, I don't have anything off the top of my head because I'm not really sure what you're trying to ask. How can we know exactly who our ideal client is? I think if you figure out your skill set um, first and you identify what you're going to be good at. So, right, like if you are I think the first thing you have to do is do what Mike said first is say like, okay, cool. Right. What am I, what comes easy to me and harder for other people? Once you figure out what that is, you then focus on that lane. And then that, those are the clients that you target. So for example, if, you, if it, if it's really easy for you to like see angles and understand how to take pictures of people and do videography, well, then that means you're a videographer. And then you figure out your ideal client is based on what you're good at. So some people are really good at taking pictures and doing videos for athletes. And other people are really good at taking pictures and doing videos for photo shoots. And other people are really good at taking pictures and doing videos for uh, uh, art. And those are three different lanes. So to answer your question, you got to figure out like what lane you're going to be in first based on what you I mean. You can say, hey, I'll do all of them, but you want to niche down, especially when you get started. So that way you can start building up your portfolio in one area before you start saying, well, I just do photos and videography. It's like, you know, no, I do photos and videography for athletes. I do photos and videography for painters or artists or musicians or, or rappers or country singers. Like you figure out what that is first. I don't know if y'all want to touch on that um, yeah. before we move on, but. Nah, Trey, you, you got it, bro. My, my mentor said the riches are in the niches. That's what I'm saying. It's all about the niche. Like finding that oh. niche. Yeah, yeah, and just. Now, and another thing to add to that, if you have a niche, go to what your competitors and see like what what on their what on their platform is generating the highest engagement or something of that nature, and then just try to replicate that. So that's that's a perfect kind of like example on how to if you're already in it, you got a competitor and you want to take advantage of somebody who's doing the same thing, bro. Just go implement exactly what they're doing. Yeah, man. I would I would piggyback off what y'all said a hundred percent. Um, even go one step further. Like y'all heard of like uh my man Ty Lopez, right? Mm -hmm. the, the OG marketer uh, back in the day Ty had like the social media marketing agency in which people would reach out to business owners to help them with their social media marketing uh, I know a couple of my boys who did that and to answer your question brother 
always just find clients who have money. And it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier about like targeting business owners. I think the best thing for anyone to do trying to find clients or start a business is like assist a business owner to help them make more money, generate more sales. You know, there's so many struggling business owners out there. Like everyone trying to become an entrepreneur, right? There's so many small businesses who need content, they need sales, they need marketing, all these things. So if you can make a business owner an extra two, three, four, five grand a month, even 10 grand a month, mm-hmm. you can charge your price basically. But yeah, man, I just say find folks who have money though. Like don't waste time with folks who are like, you know, possibly not financially qualified. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing, y'all. Like pay attention to what Mike's saying. Like you gotta go out and find the right people too. It's not just a matter of like sitting around and being like, I got this skill set. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Um, you got to go out and find people. But I'm going to jump into it first. I'll pop it off, and then we can uh, just parlay around. Mm. I know that the big topic for tonight is how to start your business with $1,000. Now, let me throw a disclaimer out here, right? Like, obviously, just not the ideal situation, y'all. Like, you don't want to have just $1,000 to get your business started. But we picked that number because we recognize that depending on where you're at, that may be all you have um, at, available to you. Um, so I'm going to go through what I would do. Uh, and how I and why I would do it. I want to explain why too. I don't want to just start talking and then just be like, this doesn't make any sense, right? So what the way I look at it is this. So when you get started, when you're looking to start a business, the first thing you could do before you, or I'm sorry, the first thing you could do is what Mike said is figure out what comes easy to you or harder to others. And that I'm not trying to just pun off that because he said that, but you want to figure out like, what can you do over the long period of time? There's a lot of different things we can all do to make money, right? Like making money is, if somebody told you you had to pay rent in three days, you would find a way to make money, right? But it's like, could you do that sustainably over time? So you want to figure out what could you do that would actually benefit you over the long haul. Now, how what that looks like on an um, ap- application stance is, let, let's say, right, that I want to do Airbnb, right? And for whatever reason, I don't know anything about credit. I, I feel in my mind I need $10,000 in order to get there, but I have $1,000. I'm trying to walk you all through a step-by-step of what it would actually look like. So the first thing I would do is figure out, okay, there are some skills, right, as Mike was saying, that can help me generate revenue faster than others. I'm going to give you one that I use that I think is very effective. is sales. A lot of people don't want to hear that. They think, oh, what is it? Oh, why do you want to go into sales? I don't want to door knock or cold call and all these other things. But there's a few things that's going to happen when you learn how to sell that's going to help you start your business. Number one is if you start in any sales position, whether that's door knocking, um, which I actually had to do. Um, and actually going around and selling little things like AT&T or being posted up in a store, right? Or even selling insurance, which I've also done where you're calling people, you're going to people's houses and they've requested it. It's going to teach you a valuable skill set. Number one, it's going to show you how to get extremely uncomfortable early, right? The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be like, yo, I'm not used to doing this. I got to actually go sell something. Number two, it's going to increase your communication skills. Number three, it's going to teach you about systems, right? It's going to show you what a system looks like from the bottom all the way to the top. Because when you're the door-to-door salesman, you also have to realize that there's a there's a ladder of ascension that goes up, right? There's the team lead, right? Then there's the head associate of the department. Then there's the actual, uh, quote-unquote, like, manager. And then there's the CEO, right? But there's going to be a system. You're also going to learn team building, right? If you haven't been an athlete, right, because everybody's not an athlete, you may not know anything about team building. And sales will make you a team building because you have to learn, right? You're also going to understand the value of training, right? So with those six things right there, all those six things are fundamental in any business. So that's why I think you need to start with something in sales. Now, you can do a variety of other things. Z, it might may tell you something different. But I would suggest that because that foundation with those six pieces is going to be your foundation for your business no matter what you go into. I don't care whether you're selling um, hair products or you're, you're doing, flipping cribs or you're selling Airbnb. You got to understand those systems. And that will teach you that uh, from the forefront. The other benefit to it is if you can get good at selling, one thing, you can learn how to sell anything because the skills in sales translate over to whatever you're selling. You're just selling now a different product, right? The word tracks don't change. It's still the same process. You can't go into it just cold, you know, saying, hey, man, I'm just going to try to sell you something. There's a process and you learn how to speak to people, right? So let's say you understand how to sell. Walk you through a process. You go get some sort of job, learn how to scale, right? Most sales-based jobs are commission. Why is that beneficial to you starting your business? Well, if you only have $1,000, and you only get paid $2,000 a month because you're working a salary-based job, there's a cylinder that you hit. But when you actually go into it and you're working something where there's a sales and there's a commission, you can max out. As if you, you know, hey, you close 10 people, you get $600. Well, mathematically, all I got to do, right, is close 60 people, 
right? And then I get $3,600. And if you're marking your mind, which is, hey, like, I got to get to 10000 Now you can scale that systematically without having to worry about, man, you know, I only make $2,000 a month. So theoretically, I got to wait five months. And that's if this happens and if this happens. So over time, you can actually grow. Um, I would suggest doing that, building up your skill set. Once you do that and you're in a commission-based business, if you're really driven to start your business, then you'll literally hit that ceiling, continue to grow. And over time, right, you could take that portion of the money and then start investing into your business. We're not going to get into the actual business itself, but that's the easy way you can start your business with $1,000 because, right, you can go out. Let's say you, a lot of people want to know practical. Go out, get yourself, you know, whatever you need to go to your interview, get your interview, do everything you got to do, right? And then from there, they're going to give you the skills at the job to help you learn how to sell. And then it's just on you to actually go out and put the reps in. Um, so uh, that's a quick overview of what I would do. Uh, you know, and what I actually did, I'm only, I can only speak on things I've done, y'all. So like, I know for me, that's what I did. I actually was at Cape Reserve selling AT&T, right? And then I went and went over to uh, self start selling uh, life insurance for the past 18 months. And I've done that as well. And that's been from literally door knocking and riding around in my car to calling people virtually and closing them over the phone. So that's my process. But uh, I'll let y'all boys go just from like what I, what I suggest. Yo, phone sales is tough, bro. That's like, that's like the hardest type of sales, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, man. ATT is tough, but uh, but yeah, bro. I, I like what you said about like team building too, because so many people try to do like the solo entrepreneur thing, where mm. it's just like them by themselves. It's you, it's them versus them. But like how you said, like when you're in a sales position, you have a team supporting you. You know, whether it's a sales manager, sales lead, whatever like that. But those are folks kind of prevent you from failing. Um. But to answer like super fast, guys, if I only had a thousand dollars, and this is what I did too, you gotta invest in the coach. Mm. You gotta get the mentor. Tell them about it. Tell, tell them about how important that is, bro. Because I, I didn't, I didn't give him the coach size. I gave him the man. I'm, I'm stubborn. I don't want to go be a coach. I just want to get it off the market. <laughs> give them, give them the coach size, bro. Tell them how they could do it, bro. Go I got y'all, man. I got y'all. I mean, first off. I mean, these bulls are dropping heavy value right now, guys. So if y'all getting mad value, please share this live with 10 people. Invite, you know, your mom, your dad, your friends, your grandma, your auntie. People need to hear this type of information. The fact y'all here on a Friday night at 9 p.m., like, y'all serious. So definitely share the live with people to help them get some value here. But, uh, yeah, man, when it comes to mentoring, guys, think about it. Like, imagine if you had a safe. And that safe inside had a million dollars. But to open that safe is a 10-digit code that you have to unlock to open the safe. Imagine if someone took five years to figure out the numbers on that safe. After five years of figuring out, figuring out, figuring out, figuring out, they finally figured that shit out. And they unlocked the safe, bam, million dollars. He has the money. He said, now the safe has new money in it. And let's say you come along. It would be crazy for you to spend another five years trying to figure out how to get the money from the safe when you have someone there who has already figured out the combination. And let's say that mentor, I don't know, charged 500 bucks, $1,000 for you to get that information on the safe. Can we all agree that would be a very smart investment for you to invest $1,000 to make a million? Mm -hmm. Someone drop yes in the chat if it would be a smart investment for you to invest one thousand dollars, even shit, ten grand, to make a million dollars. Right. Right. That's the concept right there. But mentor guys, someone literally has already been through the headaches. They've taken the L's. They wasted the time. Gone through the losses. Uh, shoot, my my brother Doug Depp. He's a multi millionaire in real estate, and uh, he probably went like a hundred grand of debt trying to figure out how to get investment properties. And now that he has his own coaching program, he teaches people how to get investment properties and avoid all the mistakes. So for anyone like trying to start a business, you got to get the coach or the mentor. You look at Phil Jackson, Kobe, coach, good player. You look at uh, MJ, Phil Jackson, coach, great player. Every great player had a coach. So why in the world? Would we be any different in entrepreneurship to think right. we can go off and win a championship without having a great coach behind us? But yeah, man, that's I, I like what you said too, bro, about practicing what you preach. Um, I invested like fifteen hundred bucks to Nehemiah's program like three years ago. 
And from that program, I made 400 grand from just high ticket sales. So mm -hmm. clearly a great investment behind it. But yeah, <laughs> yes. Right. In the day, the best investment is you, man. Best investment is you. Someone drop an investment in the chat real quick, man. But that's the key, in my opinion. Invest in yourself. No, it's crazy, bro. Because the thing that I was going to say, and I was going to try to make it a little bit more relatable to a lot more people. So, like, my situation was going to be if I were in a situation and working a nine to five. Mm -hmm. so, okay. What I would do, take this thousand dollars and I would figure out. First thing I would do is I would file this LLC so I can kind of put some pressure on myself. I would, I would open a business bank account and file an LLC. So now I got a little bit, what, about 70% of my hundred. And um, next thing I would do is whatever niche that I'm interested in, I would see who's providing the most value for free on that platform. So I limit my cost of who, who like, of, of, of something negative happening and I'm not getting enough game. But essentially, if somebody's giving away so much value for free, then who, who's the to be in the paid mentorship, coach, or coursing? So I, I say that to say what I would do is I'd probably take about, let's say if it's hell, we, we, we can say Airbnb. And I, I, can, I can give people like, no, you know what? I'm an Airbnb. I say this. I say digital marketing because at the end of the day, if you don't have leads, then you so let's talk about that. So if I was on, um, let's say if I had one skill and I'll take it back to the beginning of the conversation. Let's say if I had a video skill and now I'm like, all right, I know how to shoot videos and I'm only making like 200 or 150 with the audience that I know. So what I would do is I would take my 300 or $400. I would try to get like a mini course or some kind of information that will help me generate more leads from more quote unquote qualified clients to where I can charge a ticket because of the previous testimonials that I got from working with my lower ticket clients. And then I would kind of take that money and keep investing it into different skills. So that's what I was talking about. Like, as you can see, and y'all can kind of see how the framework of you taking this thousand dollars and putting it in an extra skill each month can kind of, it does, like, 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 like Trey said, let's not kind of sugarcoat this shit, this entrepreneurship. Like, it doesn't happen overnight. And you can probably ask Mike, before he was able to generate that, that, that bigger income over the phone, he had to go through cold calling. He had to go through nose, tarp saying. He had to go through hangups. He had to go through dialing 100 people just to get one person to pick up. Just like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't walk downtown for the Airbnbs and find the first, the first apartment that I walked in is not going to be credible. Like, it, like it, about smart lock it's about locking systems it's about parking like it's just a lot of stuff that you can get from mentors mike said and get the cheat code of the game that will kind of expedite the process of you trying to get these building blocks of this bridge to generate more income passive if y'all kind of see i don't know if i'm giving them too much game like like yeah, you suck the sauce on me bro like these skills right so right now i'm, a, I'm a, all i do is video so now i figure out how to generate leads. After I figure out how to generate leads, I'm gonna go to somebody who has a video business or or big video business who's coaching people for it. And now I'm like, hey, bro, what exactly format teaching people? Now I can charge another. On co so it's just different skills. Now you see how this person starts to build itself up. So now you're a mentor. Now you're a videographer. Now you know how to generate leads. So as you're a person, because Let's talk about like value and everybody knows this in this call because we was in some form of sales. So essentially what you're doing in the workplace or in the niche of the audience is you're creating value in that. And the more value you create as a person or as a company, the more revenue you're going to generate. So like that goes back to building those skills as a person. So I mean, maybe I can add on to what I would like to, bro, but that's kind of my thing. I would take that thousand dollars first. And whatever skill that I have that I'm better at at other, others, I would add another additional skill to it that would generate that income. So whether that be like, hell, if I cut hair, I would get somebody to market for branding and marketing on me cutting hair and how could I get my engagement higher. So now I got that branding and marketing. You can go talk. Like, I'm, I can keep going. <laughs> no, no, no. You, 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 yeah, you, you good, bro. You, you bringing up a good point. So it's really, it's skill hacking, right? Yeah, that's what it is. It's skill hacking, right? So let, let's let's make it relatable for everybody. A lot of athletes, right? You think about it, right? If you if you're a hooper, right, and all you you good at dribbling, right, and you need to realize, all right, so in order for me to get better, 
right? I got to start investing and finding somebody to teach me how to shoot, but not just shoot any shot, right? So what he's saying is if I'm a barber right, and I need to figure out how to market, right, to get more people to come to my business, that's one thing, right? And then I need to market to figure out what type of people I want to come. Because it's not just, it's one thing to just get a bunch of people to come. Then it's another thing to figure out what type of people you want to come, right? Then it's, oh, I got to market to get more barbers in here because now I have more people. And it's just like with basketball, if we're using that for an analogy, right? If I'm, if I'm dribbling, now I need to figure, okay, I need to learn how to finish, right? Now I need to know what type of finish I need to learn how to do. Then the next thing I learn, what type of jumper do I want to shoot? Mid-range, short, long, three, like it. So over time, right, you got to stack skills. But you can only do that by investing or, as Mike said, by taking a long time, years, right, if you're using the lock analogy, to actually, you know, figure out that skill set rather than just paying somebody. And I think that's the key that everybody got to pay attention to. It's really, when you think about it, it's like, you got to go find people who are already good at what you're trying to do. And they'll teach you what you're trying to do, but you have to be willing to pay them. A lot of us, we do think, unlike in sports, like most people have done some sport or have tried to play some instrument or done something where an instructor, teacher, coach, mentor, it's all the same thing. An instructor teaches you something that you previously don't know. But as Mike said, now we get into this space where we think, oh, okay, cool, well, I'm in business and I can just YouTube my way. And it's like, no, you didn't YouTube your way with anything else. Like you paid to go, you paid to, you, you paid to learn how to, how to shoot, you paid to learn how to dribble, you paid to learn how to, t like you paid in Little League and it's like, yeah, you had to compete, but it's like, you're still competing. Like you still out here trying to make money. It's like, you're going to YouTube your way away. And like, that, that's, 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 that's not how it works, man. Um, I think, go ahead. Right. when you pay, you pay attention. Hey, for real, for real. And even if it's my, even if it's micro though, like I want y'all to realize something that something that a lot because I know I can already hear a lot of people. Well, I hear what y'all saying, but all these programs I look for are over a thousand dollars, so that doesn't apply to me. Okay, no, nah, but y'all are sleeping on something that's really important. The first thing Z said he would do is try to go find somebody who's already pushing valuable free content, right? Now that doesn't mean that he's gonna try to figure it out on his own, but what Z could do is. If I can figure out from this free content, because if y'all really pay attention to the free stuff, the really people that really know what they're talking about and you really listen, they really giving you the sauce away to you, but you really not tapped in. And if you really decide to take action on the free stuff, it would make you some money. And if it made you enough money, you would then be able to go get their higher income thing. But let's just take a step back and let's say you, you're not ready to do that. You mentally can't see yourself there. Okay, so now you got to think, all right, I can't do that because for whatever reason, I have a blockage. Let's say there's all these other things that are $47, $97, three-day, three-day, three-day courses, right? Uh, uh, more opportunities for you to get an ebook, right? I know my dog, Mike, got an ebook. I know uh, Z got an ebook. I know mine's about to drop here soon. Yeah, you can go get an ebook for $47, $57, $97. Mike going to teach you how to actually learn how to start closing uh, high-ticket sales. In, in his ebook and his mini course, Z gonna show you how to go out and get business funding, right? I'm gonna show you how to generate leads, right? So you can go find, buy that for $47, but it's a matter of you actually being willing to invest in yourself. So what Mike is saying is correct, but you know, I don't wanna hear no excuses about, well, I ain't got enough to do this. No, 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 there's other things out there, but you're not, just admit you're not ready to do the work. That's the reality. You're not ready to actually put the work in with the, with the cheaper thing because it requires you to actually do it rather than somebody talking to you. And, and, and that's what I got to say. But go ahead, Z. I know you're about to say something. First off, I'll talk about the game, which thinking like pop off like that. And, and of course, you may have an anomaly in some cases. But in a general sense, like you said, bro, in every form of sport, you get instructed. And it kind of aggravates me. To, like, let, 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 and and for, you, for your institutions are cool. But I gotta use this. I gotta use this, bro. So, like, let's say you 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 spend over six figures for for a college degree, right? To get one that you're depending on to make you this certain amount of income, and essentially you can't put in five percent of what you're just to go get enough that's gonna potentially, you know, value you as a person. So, so for somebody to think it goes back to putting those building blocks in to to the skills that you're missing, bro. Because if you can't, if you essentially if you can't put that that shit together, bro, like you you won't generate the income. Like if you if you have those missing, you won't generate. The income. Because and is my, my 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 boy Trey put me on Myron Lewis, bro, and he always says, bro, he says everybody is doing exactly what they can with the person that they are right now. So 
mental blockage. It's a person that you got to become in order to generate this type of So whether that might be getting a certain skill or doing something that's out of your comfort zone that's going to generate you more income, like, man, you got to take that step and you got to be willing to be in it. Like, like this shit ain't easy, bro. Like, you're going to have to, it's going to be bumps and some bruises. But you got to take it on the chin. Yeah, man. Hey, Z, and, and you know, I didn't know that you do, uh, actually do credit, bro, or, or credit funding. Yeah. The thing is, bro, we just been in the game so long. Like, Trey, shout out to Trey for putting me on about two or three years ago, bro. But we just been in the game, bro, and just, like you said, like, consuming certain information over a certain amount of time, bro, like, for two or three years. Like, you just innately have this ability to teach people that you got without trying. So, yeah, bro, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's been dope, bro. Y'all moving, man. I got a, I got a copy of ebook too after that. Yeah. Oh, shoot, Trey, can't wait for your joint to drop. But you know how people always say, man, like, like I can't have, I can't find the money to maybe invest in a coaching program. Or, mm -hmm. bro, where am I going to find a thousand dollars, right? I talked to a lady like two days ago on the phone, guys, and she said she spent like two grand on Uber Eats in the last mm -hmm. like month. I was like, damn. <laughs> and she started like rationalizing to herself. She was like. If I spend two grand on Uber Eats, I could definitely invest in the mentorship. And I was like being quiet. She was like talking, talking, talking her, her whole thing through whatever. So I really do think, man, for people who struggle to find the funds to invest in with what you do, Z, rich people use other people's money. Broke folks use their money. Mm -hmm. So I think for, for people who have like decent credit, man, don't even pay for the mentorship. Use the bank's money. <laughs> use the credit card. <laughs> right. You know, be be smart about it. Like, shoot, you mess around, go into a coaching program, you don't pay a single dollar for it, put it on a credit card. This time in 30 days, you already making money from the program. Use that money, pay back the credit card, and then you just got the program for free. I know so many folks, because uh, with Neo, he has a 55K program, and I would say like 60% of the people who pay for the program, guys, hey, they man. put it on a credit card. Just swipe, swipe, done. <laughs> And then we teach them how to run plays and get the money right back in 30 days. So it's literally like it was for free, basically. But yeah, just be smart with your finances. You have the money. You just got to be smart on how to find it. And I'm sure Z can put you on some tactics on how to use the bank's money. So, you know, use your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and something that I know Mike can attest to in sales, right? And this isn't really like a sales presentation, but as far <laughs> as it comes to like finding money, is like the concept they're talking about is what in sales they call find the money, right? So when you start asking people and understand their budget without being like, hey, how much money do you make? Where right? you start asking them questions to probe them to answer, hey, like you kind of start figuring out what is your budget. Because as, as Mike knows, right, when you're, when you're figuring out who you're talking to, depending on what you're selling, you need to kind of have an understanding of where they're financially at, depending on your packages and what you can offer them. And I say all that to say, right, we need to also approach ourselves the same way, right? Do an audit on yourself to realize where, are, where am I spending money, right? Because a lot of times we just spend money and we won't think about it, especially when we're not an entrepreneur or a business owner because we're not used to paying attention to our money. We're used to getting a check every two weeks. So if you are trying to figure out how to start a business and you're making money every two weeks and you're not figuring out like, man, I, I, you know, I don't got this much money, actually go back and audit yourself, right? <laughs> Sit down on a Sunday for an hour. I promise it doesn't take long. And, and like I said, guys, I can only speak on stuff I did. It took me like eight months to do this. And I was selling insurance, right? But actually sitting down and auditing my money and figuring out where am I spending my money and just start going in. It's not hard. Once you get into the habit of it, do it maybe once a month, pay attention to where you're actually spending your money. Um, the same way that you do through sales, I think that's important when you when you break it down, you'll start to see, okay, cool, like, all right, um, yeah, I'm not spending money in the right places. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what I would say as far as that's that's concerned. Transactions equal transformations. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Every transaction we've ever made, like you, like both y'all played uh, sports, right? Right. Shoot, investing in the coaching, investing in the equipment when you were younger, your parents buying you the gear, everything that they've ever bought equal to you guys becoming like elite athletes. But uh, I like what Trey said in the sense of like, guys, look at your bank statements in the last 90 days. You probably are a sum of what you spend money on. If you go into your bank statement, you see it, damn, Uber Eats, strip club, uh, <laughs> IHOP, you know, this is like, damn, hey. what am I yeah. spending my bread on? And you can see the, the result of where you're currently at. But I challenge y'all to invest in the coach, grab an ebook, do something for yourself and watch how your transactions will start changing 
outlook, mindset, life, the whole nine. But yeah, that's a good play though. Look at your bank statements. We got a uh, we got a question here. What advice would you suggest to someone who is transitioning into entrepreneurship but struggles financially um, during during the process? Uh, that's a that's a good question. You you wanna you wanna take one of y'all wanna I've been talking a lot. One of y'all wanna wanna take that one or I, I could take it, no matter to me. It's all easy. Cool. All right. Now I would I would think I will audit myself first as far as like depending on what kind of what kind of finances that I have available. So when you say struggling financially, I feel like every business should put themselves in a position that they can liquidate some form of like so first I would see if I do have available financing in that industry. And then if I if I am, if I can't access funds with, with, with business credit or some of that nature, I think essentially what you would have to do is figure out some high income earning skill that you could do. Like 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 Trey said, one thing, one asset that we had about being in sales was like when we had a struggle, and all we had to do was get on the call, make a hundred calls, close something, and then you got twelve hundred. Two twenty five hundred dollars. So it's kind of hard to a answer that question because I think it's kind of unique to the individual and what kind of situation they have or what like what kind. You know, I think it's kind of I I think that's a question where you have to have a follow up question to kind of probe that situation and uh, like how exactly can I ask? Like that that that's the that's the qualifying. When you yeah. Financially, like what 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 kind of trouble is the business in? Like, how much do I need to liquidate? Like, how soon do I need to liquidate that cash? Like, I mean, it's just a lot of questions. I mean, just because, like, if it's 30 or 40 days, and then now you're talking about times to where you can kind of make dispute, disputes on your credit line, get some trade lines open, get somebody to add you as a, as a um, you know what I'm trying to say, on, on the account, Tark. Get somebody to add you as an authorized user. Oh, yeah, that's right. Easy, yeah. Increasing your credit limits. Or even... <laughs> So it's just different ways that you can go about it, but it's a, each situation unique. Somebody can add on to it, though. But yeah, I, yeah. I would say, Dan, I, I looked at your profile if you're still on here, and if you could, I would love to help you out real quick. If you could tell me, it says you're a realtor. Are you like independent, or are you with a company where you have restrictions? I'm gonna give you two plays you could run. Um, if you're if you're with a if you're independent, I'm gonna just let you know off the off the rip. Um, you're similar to what uh, me and Mike were, were talking about earlier, where literally. Right, you have the ability with a skill, whether in that sales, to actually go out and create your own income. Right, it's like, like we used to call it printing money, right? Like you literally through your words can print money, and I say that right. And I want to also put a disclaimer out here too, Deanna, and I'm speaking directly to you. Uh, I think Mike and Z said it earlier. Like this ain't sweet. Like don't think that when you transition from anything into entrepreneurship that it's gonna be a breeze. That it's gonna be like. You just gonna start running, running. Like if you listen to what my man Mike said, like he was twenty thousand dollars in debt, y'all. It wasn't like he just he. I'm sure he wasn't trying to be twenty thousand dollars in debt. You feel me? Like, like you know what I'm saying? It, it's not. It was thirty. Stop disrespecting. Yeah, it was. It was thirty, but we'll oh, say my fault. That's my fine. fault. Right, right. But but you feel me? He, he was he was thirty thousand dollars in debt. So I don't want. Don't get discouraged. That's the first thing I said. You know, like don't get discouraged. Thinking, okay, cool, like. Dang, um, you know, I'm struggling to get there. Like, it's it's going to be a grind. Right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. I know that's a, a pun that nobody likes to hear, but it's the truth, right? Because you have a vision. If you could make that vision come to light in a week, everybody would do that. Everybody who had any vision of any business would do that. Um, but as far as like, if you're a realtor, right? If you're independent, go out and, and start just really hustling. Like, you just gotta. Um, I know I, I was I was I thought I was full time when I was an agent. I'm only gonna speak on stuff I do, right? So. I thought I was full time when I was an agent. I was working like I would call from like eight until one, right? And then just be done. Cause I was like, oh, okay, cool. I call six, seven hours. Cause I wasn't used to dialing. I mean, I'm talking about four or 500 calls by one o'clock, like running through the calls, right? Getting a sale, thinking I'm cool. But it wasn't until I actually started going from eight until 12, took a break, then called from one to three, took a break, then called from four to eight to when I saw my income start increasing. Now, I'm not saying that you're not doing that, but that's a play. If you have the ability, you can actually go out. Um, that's a question of the viewers by what it, oh, my fault. My, she was just asking in general, my bad. But anyways, for somebody who is in any sales position, um, you know, to, to to do that as well, you know, just double, kind of double down on whatever you are doing. My bad, Deanna, I didn't mean to, you feel me? But nonetheless, that's what's up though. 
Um, but yeah, for anybody else though, um, I think that would be that would be a good play for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'll go. I'll go one a step in a different direction with that. Uh, if you're fi if you're struggling financially, shoot, both y'all went to an event last week, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you guys were around millionaires, and for the most part, outside of traveling, I'm sure you guys went to the event for free, right? Right. Well, for someone who who really is struggling financially, you gotta get in the room. You gotta meet other folks who are at that seven figure, six figure level, and you know. The best rooms you gotta pay to get in, but there are tons of rooms they could get in for free. Like how they always say, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You look at like LeBron James, for the most part, he makes people around him better. You can argue that a little bit, but for the most part, he does. <laughs> um, any great, any great entrepreneur, you can see that they make other folks around them better. But to just simplify it really fast, I would just look for networking events. So many people throw free events you can just go to, learn, get gems from, meet people, connect with them. Be it, you got no money, you got to get yourself in the room somehow, some way, finding folks who are, you know, making money. Right. And I, I want to clarify, like, just for Mike's point, we paid to get in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, we paid to come to the event. Bad, no, you, you good. You good. But, but that further clarifies the point, right? Like, now we have a relationship where, like, and this is why I want, want everybody to understand, like, I met Mike. Z met Mike last week, right? This Friday, literally a week ago, right, y'all? Like now, in the future, going forward, we're going to make money together just off of our different skill sets of us all being in this area, right? And we don't know, right, whatever, like 2500 to get in the room, cool, not tripping, right? But now what happens with if I need, okay, cool, you know, I got some marketing clients, and then uh, Mike got a sales team. Now yep. we partner up, and we start basically JV in it, and my man's making where well, we selling it for five grand. He making twenty five hundred, three three k off, and he just cutting us off too, you know, to do our thing. Now, what what does that really cost me? And this, I met four or five mics just in that room. And by mic, I just mean other people with all sorts of different skill sets. So you you think about it right when you think about the relationship, um, and you know, everything comes through some form of relationship. Like if you think about any time something has gone up or gone down, it's been a relationship. I want everybody to really think about that. Like, yeah. And I'm not trying to get spiritual, but like, God moves through people. Like, So things come through relationship. And that's why it's so important to get in the room because you don't know who you'll meet. That one conversation, that one person can change your entire life. Um, but yeah, there's free events where the same exact thing happens all the time. <laughs> you can be, just go to an event, but it's like, sometimes we got to get out, out of our comfort zone to even get there. Yeah, man. Just open up to people too. Because I remember when Z said he was in sales, it was just like, all right, bet. It felt like it was like an instant connection, low key. And I, I would strongly suggest, man, like, like just be transparent with what y'all are doing. If you're struggling to start your business, like tell someone that. Because that person may be a mentor looking for a mentee, or maybe talk to someone who's also struggling, and y'all just game together to figure it out. But be super transparent when you're at these networking events. Don't be trying to like act like you're big and you know, you're cool. You're not trying to talk to no one. I've been there before. But just be super transparent with like exactly what you're going through. Because when Z told me he was he was trying to you know start his uh his, his mentor program like getting leads, my mind went crazy. I'm like, bro, we could go crazy with that program. He was already in sales. I'm like, that would be nothing. Do the posts like how I mentioned to you guys, and like that could be five, ten, twenty k easily. So I'm happy Z told me that. Uh, I'm sorry, Trey told me that story. And yeah, you got these programs, guys. Just be super transparent. <laughs> If it's like that, I also go to like you you talk about like the the how easy it is to be able to access those amount of money, but I think it also goes back to the skills that we generated. Like like it's different like yes, Airbnb, you do a form of coaching, my boy do marketing, but we also got a skill that we enhanced maybe like six a year ago, months ago, that's able to benefit us in this hell, like just created with trade. I've been able to acquire some skills in digital. I'm not gonna say I'm the best digital marketer, but I can I can damn sure say I know more about digital than the average person just because it's my dog. So it's like it's just those forms of skills, like me being a I know some form of digital marketing. Now I know some form now I know some other make make me more valuable in this industry. So so it's like as you, as you keep hitting on that, it's crazy how like we keep talking about income. <laughs> I income earning strategies, but it's also about how many skills does that person acquire through that time of their entrepreneurial journey, bro? Like, it's just, it's, that's pretty tough. Yeah, uh, it, it, it coincides.
it coincides, it works together. Um, you can't have one without the other because uh, the more you surround yourself with different people and you change your environment, and I'm going to keep preaching on this because the most important thing out of all this is mindset. We can talk all about different things you could do. You could go find a coach. You could find a mentor. You could go get a sales job. But if you don't have a mindset, none of it matters. And by mindset, I don't just mean, you know, wake up and go grind and do all these other things. No, it's like what, what happens when you start getting into a situation where things get difficult, um, similar to what Deanna said, not towards her, but in, in terms of everybody financially, like what do you, what do you lean on? What do you rely on? Um, and I think the people that you surround yourself with in your environment is going to dictate how you respond. If you're surrounding yourself with me, Mike, Z, Neo, the list goes on type people, you are going to feel to yourself like I can't just sit here. Like they out here hustling. I'm not just going to sit here. But if you're surrounding yourself with, you know, unnecessary things that aren't pouring into you, right? People that aren't pouring into you. People who are like, I told you not to try that. You need to go ahead and just get you a job doing X, Y, Z. Like, what is that going to do to your mind? So it's important, y'all, like, before we type into any real strategy, that, that mindset has to be locked in, spot on. Your environment's got to be tuned up for your success, I, man. I want to go back to you talking about, like, your environment and the people that you got around you. Because, like, like both, both, both of my guys said, like, this shit ain't easy. So, like, when you do decide to kind of start and take that leap, like, I think the biggest thing is consistency. And, like, when you're going to get out in the field, like, don't let the people around you be like, like, let's say, let's say I give y'all an example, bro. Let's say uh, I'm geeked up this week. You know, I'm going to get my LLC file. I'm going to get everything done. It's only been the first week in my home and be like, hey, bro, I thought you was turning your life around. I thought you was, I thought you was on some other shit. Like, don't let shit like that, like, be indicative of the actions that you're taking to, to, to what you got. Like, my, my favorite thing is don't let the win be indicative of the journey that you're taking. So like those wins that you're doing, people don't, don't let them like, bro, like, or like try to, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all know it's all about the mindset of people that you got around you because like it takes time. And like people gonna be like, like even when you get an Airbnb, oh, I thought you was going, I thought, I thought you was gonna have this many property. I thought you was gonna do this and so on. So like this should take time and you gotta get game. and. I just, I, I just love when you're hitting on that talk, like, bro, like, it don't happen overnight, bro, in just environment. I, that's important, bro. Like, it's imperative about, like, how successful you're going to be as an entrepreneur solely, bro. Like, the people in the around you, bro. So that's tough, dog. That's, that's fact, Z. Can, can, can I ask y'all a question, though, man? Because, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was curious to see, like, how y'all met, first off. But I wanted to know, like, let's say someone who's listening, they've got a group of friends who probably aren't in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're playing video games all day. They're smoking. They're, you know, maybe they grew up with them since they were younger, high school. Like, you know, these are like their boys or their homies, right? What would you say to that person who is literally all friends with folks who aren't taking that next step in their life? What would you say to that person to kind of help them get out that comfort zone, even if their boys might clown them? Talking about you about to start your business? You crazy. What would you, what would you say to that dude who's like, bro, it's tough. I, it's just me. You got him, Trey. Really? Yeah. No, nah, so what I would say is the most important thing, and the you know what's crazy is, like, I don't know this about you, but I'm willing to bet that every single person, in my opinion, has had this to some extent. I say that to say, like, I'm sure Mike has. I'm sure Z has to his own extent, right? Um, so I'm going to give you, like I said, y'all, let me speak about what I do. I'm going to give you what I would do, right, and what I have done. And my thing is, man, I – um. I'm big in utilizing the things around me to work for me rather than work against me. So let me give you an example, right? If that's my situation and I'm around people and they're like, you about to start your business and it's kind of, it's not, it's not promoting me to go in that direction, right? The first thing I'm going to do is start realizing that those conversations I'm having, they have to be limited now. So I'm going to start capping out those conversations. I'm not saying I'm going to eradicate my relationship with my friends that I grew up with and I'm not going to talk to them. Absolutely not. I'm not telling people to do that. I'm not condoning that. But what I am going to say is let's say you were talking to them, you know, two hours out of the day. You know, I'm only talking to you for 30 minutes. That hour and a half now has got to go to me. That hour and a half got to go to what am I watching to on YouTube? I said this on the first episode, controlling what you're consuming in your mind auditing your Instagram, going back and actually sitting down, unfollowing um, people 
right? And I'm not talking about people like close family friends, but people that aren't pouring back into your life or you're not pouring back into theirs. Number two, I'm going to go on my YouTube. I'm going to un unsubscribe to all the things that aren't pouring back into me. All the funny videos. I love it. Trust me, I'm all for it. There's a bunch of funny dudes out there, and it's a t but it's a time and place for that. I can go look that up. But when I go on my YouTube, I want to, like I said earlier, I want to use things for me, not against me. What is against me? When I go on Instagram, I go to the Explore page, right? What, what's going on there? Is it just funny stuff? Is it just women? Or am I going on there and see entrepreneurs? Am I going on there and see, if I'm an athlete, I'm going to see other athletes. If I'm going on there and I'm seeing other musicians, right? Am I being inspired? And, can I, and you can do that. If you go on your YouTube and start searching for those type of things, YouTube will feed you those things. So when you open your phone, you'll be prompted to see all sorts of new things. You'll start finding new entrepreneurs. If you were looking for how to figure something out, you'll figure it out, right? That's the first thing I'm going to do. Number two, tied in with that too, I'm going to go find somebody that I can relate to that's not in my circle right now. So let's say I got a group of friends. I'm a black, um, black, right? I grew up in the inner city, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, right? And I'm trying to get to here. I'm going to go find somebody who has a similar story to me and I'm going to go consume everything they have. I'm going to go buy all their books. I'm going to go subscribe to all their podcasts and I'm going to start listening to everything they're saying. And then from there, I'm going to continue to pour into myself through their story, right? Because it's, it's easier for me to relate than if I find somebody who's uh, white, they grew up in a completely different area than me, they had a completely different upbringing than me, it's hard for me to relate to them. But if I, and there are people out there who got to where you're trying to go, you just got to go sit down and find them. So that's what I would do. Um, because I think if you could start taking that two hours that you would talk to those people or be around those people and now cut it to 30, make it concise, ask them how they're doing, chop it up with them, you know, make it genuine, but then use that other hour and a half every day to really start pointing to yourself. It's this book called The Compound Effect that basically just talks about the same thing that we understand as athletes and in school, but we don't implement in our business and our goals, which is small incremental pushes over time lead to big, large marginal gains. And it's important to focus on those incremental pushes. An hour and a half might seem like that, that would do nothing. But if you do that every single day over a month, right, you multiply 30. I mean, that's 30 hours plus another 30, 15. That's 45 hours of dedicated time to yourself for what exactly you're trying to pursue. On top of your natural environment, meaning your phone, your YouTube, the music you're listening to, now actually being conducive to where you're trying to go. If you stay focused on that, you don't even necessarily you may want to start finding more friends but if you just for whatever reason can't and get can't get out of your situation you can almost create that environment for yourself so that's what that's what i would say uh to do big bus my my phone's gonna go like what i was gonna say since you put me on that book give him the author darren hard sound effect y'all boys go tap into that john but what i would say bro is i think that go back to what, what, what trey was saying bro and, and what all the successful people say, like, you can't get a certain amount of income from the person that you are at that moment. So, like, essentially, you got to create the framework of your thinking, like, so if you truly want to change your situation, and your boy, it's called the compound effect. And, and your boy aren't pouring in, are giving you our energy to take that route. Then, I mean, then I mean, you got to cut some time. Out, like, like, hey, pick happen. your phone up. Pick your phone up, Z. It's going in and out. You can hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Just pick it up while you're talking. The speaker going down. Go ahead. All right. Where, 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 where drop off at? Uh, I don't know because it was going in and out. Just start with your idea again. So what I was saying is, I mean, it go back to what the successful people always say. It's all about you becoming a different person than what you are at the current moment. So essentially, like, let's say if all of my boys, it go back to what Trey was talking about. It's what, what I'm, when I'm hanging with my boys for those two hours, essentially what conversations are we having? What kind of information am I consuming? Is it going to better me in order to generate me more income to what I'm passionate in or, or the skill that I want to acquire? So like, if I'm essentially this person who sits around all day, plays the game with my boys or do something that doesn't generate me income. That's not the person that I'm going to be. That's going to generate this six figure income that I want to get to. So essentially I got to put these skills in and put this time and effort to become another person, whether that be consuming the right information, whether it be getting in the right room with people, going to mentorships. And I think the key thing is like, people want to say like, you don't, you like, you need coaching for life essentially. Like you need coaching for everything else. What makes people think you don't need coaching 
for being successful. Like, like it goes back to what my boy Mike said in the beginning of the live. Like if somebody had a safe for five million dollars and it took them five years to unlock the safe, why in the hell would I go just pay him for the information in order how how to unlock the safe for five million dollars as opposed to my homeboy who had never even fucking looked at the safe? So like, <laughs> I, so how can I have this conversation with my dog who don't even know what the safe looked like? as opposed to somebody who's been working on the safe for five years. Like, you guys think about that. Like, it's all about the mindset and the environment. Like, my dog don't even know how to crack the first code on the safe, but I got somebody who's been working on the numbers for five years. Like, just think about that. And, and that's how you get to the money. Like, it's that simple, bro. Like, it's literally that simple. Like, that's how you get to the money. That's the coach. Coach hack, man. Go get around people that's successful. Yeah, job, that's the hack. Easy, fellas. Easy, man. Uh, I, I think the last thing I'll probably say, because y'all dropping some mad gems right now. But first off, man, if y'all getting value from this, someone drop a value in the chat real quick here. Because for real, like I said, y'all could be anywhere tonight, but the fact y'all locked in, learning, like y'all like the one percenters in my eyes. But for real, man, I think one of my good buddies, Ed, he used to live in Ohio, and he was filled with dudes who were in gangs. His best friend died when he was growing up. Like he was in some serious trouble growing up as a youth. And he moved to Vegas, uh, where I'm from originally, and he met people, started a business, life, life took off. I would almost say, kind of, Trey, you say, you know, slowly cut them off. I'll go the opposite direction. I'll say go cold turkey and just move. <laughs> move out to the, move out to city. Move give him, give him, give it, give it to him, <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> I'm just saying, just a personal perspective. Like I'm from Maryland originally. I I went from Maryland and then I went to Vegas for eight years, and now I'm in ATL uh, solely only for working on entrepreneurship. But I know if I stayed in Maryland with my boys who are you know smoking, drinking, playing 2K, I'm still cool with some of them. But I know I definitely would have a small shot of making, it, in my opinion. But the fact I was able to move from different states. It opened my mindset to what's possible. So if someone is in a predicament where it's like, damn, bro, I, I feel stuck, I feel trapped, hey, we live in America. You could go anywhere. Just book a flight. It's not that crazy, right? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Z could put you on with some credit hacks to book a flight pretty easily, you know. But I would strongly suggest just moving out to your own state and then uh, getting around some people where you're forced to meet new people now being in a, in a new city. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, for sure. And um, if y'all haven't already, y'all been tapped in, man. Make sure y'all y'all follow my dog Z. Make sure y'all follow Mike. Just go ahead and click that button there at the top. Uh, you can drop a quick quick follow. But yeah, man. Before we hop off of here, Mike, if you got anything else to say to him, man, uh, we're gonna be live again on Sunday, y'all. So y'all y'all stay tuned. We got another special guest, and we're gonna keep bringing people on here, man. Because I know y'all don't want to just hear me and Z talking the whole time. <laughs> so we're gonna try to find different entrepreneurs with different uh, skill sets and start bringing different people on here. We'll still have the ability sometimes just for people to come on freestyle, ask us about, um, you know, how to start their business and get going in different spaces, whether it be marketing or Airbnb or little things on uh, on credit. But, Mike, if you have anything else you want to give them, man, before you hop off, we appreciate you for coming, bro. Yeah, um, man. And then, we'll, and then we'll wrap it up, bro. No, I appreciate it, y'all, for real. I got to ask y'all, how do I get these blue checks, man? Man, we we because you know we we <laughs> we we pro What's the athletes, secret? bro. So they 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 gave it they gave it to us. Um, well, they gave it to me. What was okay. it in April? Um, I'm playing the USFL, bro. So I just woke up. My fiance texted me and was like, "You got a blue check." I was like, oh. "Dang, okay, that's what's up, bro." <laughs> I didn't even know, bro. I, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't even know. Um, yeah, a bunch of people was asking us that, like, how we did it. Now we ain't pay for it or do anything like that, man. They uh they just gave it to us because we we still play ball, so. Okay. All right, that could be a whole new course right there. I was like, how that happen? I need to find <laughs> Trying to help my people get in front of the Yeah, man. But, but now, nah, bro, I mean, like I said, I appreciate y'all. Shoot, we got to tap back in. Shoot, for uh, Trey, definitely have, have some type of sales mastermind. Uh, I'd love to chop it up more with you about, like, legit tactics, strategies, objections, processes. That'd be cool. But I mean, if y'all want to tap more in, uh, I got an ebook. Seven, sorry, three steps to making fifteen thousand in thirty days from high ticket sales. It literally walks you through step by step how to go out and find your first client, how to go about closing the deals for them, what to say on the on the outbound calls, word for word. Everything I've used, my team has used to help me make four hundred grand. 
Uh, my one boy, Ed, who I mentioned, moved from Ohio to Vegas. He made 15K in 30 days off using the same tactics in the book. So if you're struggling to figure out what your next step, step is in life or like what that superpower is that I mentioned earlier, the book goes over step-by-step step exactly how to learn a high income skill, how to go out, close deals for influencers. And if you follow that blueprint, I feel super confident that you can make 10 to 20K by just doing exactly what we say in the book. And then, I don't know, for the first three people, you get a 50% off discount. Just shoot me a DM and I got you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man, and, and tell them, and tell them, tell them mm -hmm. the price to, to get something like that, man, because I think they're sleeping on the fact that you're giving them, just listen to what he said. Uh, let me, let he me help. He's he's about to give y'all. Go ahead, go ahead. Z. Just tell him. I don't think they realize, man. Like that thousand dollars. Like y'all don't. He just said he's gonna give y'all some plays to make fifteen man. grand in thirty days. I'm gonna hit him. I, I, go I, ahead, bro. I ain't got go ahead. I'm gonna hit him with the neo first. Majority of them ain't even gonna execute on this information. So mm. let's, let's hit him with that first, man. Cause half mm. half, half of them, like you said, bro. You got an ebook that literally taught somebody how to generate 15K, but it's also about consuming the information and being dedicated to applying it, bro. So first off, I want to say is I appreciate you coming on the platform, bro, like sharing the game, bro, like giving away the game because, like, you're a real-life story of making this shit happen, bro, and people need to see, like, like, because everybody, everybody think it's all gimmicks, like getting in courses or investing in, like, coaching and everything, bro. Like, you, like, we all live in examples of taking coaching like, my first Airbnb, I think my boy was just on here. Like, he helped me get my first. There he go. Great. Yeah, he right here. Great. Great. That, that, and that's his message. Like, like, <laughs> like, this shit real, dog. <laughs> like, 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 if you want to generate high ticket sales, man, holler at my boy, Mike. If you want high ticket coaching, man, holler at my boy, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Z. Appreciate it, man. Yes, yeah, sir. man. Well, all right, y'all, man. We're going to catch y'all. We'll be on here on Sunday. Uh, tap in with us, bro. We're going to have another one. We got a special guest coming at y'all. We'll drop that on Sunday. Otherwise, if y'all need anything, you want to book a call, You, we all got links to book a call. Go ahead and uh, go to the link tree in each of our bios if you haven't followed us. Uh, we love to tap in with y'all. We can get a one-on-one -on -one call, whether it's marketing, high-ticket sales, Airbnb, credit. Hit us up, man. We'll let y'all know. Otherwise, I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm about to get out of here. Yeah.